been asked by a number of people who have seen my video on planing square if I can do something on edge jointing boards. So that's what this video is about. <coughs> I basically go edge joint these two boards of beach together by hand planing the uh, edges uh, and biscuiting and uh, gluing up. A uh, quick word about the plane, the plane I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a number 7 for this, which is the longest plane I've got. It's best to use the longest plane possible because you've got a more, better chance of getting the, the wood flat using a bigger plane than a smaller one uh, because obviously the sole skips over the high spots and, and takes the top of the high spots, whereas a small plane, like a number 4 perhaps, will just go up and down the uh, high spots and you just end up with a thinner bit of wood but still with undulating. Um, you could do it with a number four, but it'd be hard to work. That's basically uh, the story. Uh, if you've only got one plane, if you were thinking of buying a plane, if you've only got one, I'd recommend a five and a half. That's the sort of workhorse plane. Uh, a five and a half as opposed to a five, um, because it's got more weight to it, and a lot of plane is about momentum. For this exercise, we'll just uh, join two balls together. Um, now, normally you'd be doing a, a tabletop or bench top or something like that. There might be a number of boards that would be joined to. Uh, the best way of marking up the boards is to draw a triangle over them. Uh, that uh, saves any ambiguity. Sometimes if you number them, uh, you get the numbers mixed up or something. But the <coughs> put the triangle on is, is quite unambiguous. It's obvious. Um, I'm assuming that we've got... Uh, um, Got our boards all, all planed up and everything ready to go. All we're doing is, is just doing the jointing of them. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to set our plane. Um, so it's taking a nice even shaving off. And what I mean by an even shaving is one where if you run the plane down the wood with a shaving coming out of the middle of the plane, you get a shaving which is the same width all the way across the width of the shaving. See, that's what we're getting here. It's a little bit over. Now, if you let's, let's unadjust the plane just to show you how we get that. So, at the moment, I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. So at the moment, we're getting a shaving which is thicker on one side than it is on the other. It's thicker on the left than it is on the right. So, if I move the lever over towards the left, we should get a shaving which is a bit more easy. I've gone a little bit too far now because you can see the shaving is a bit wider on the right, so if I move it back slightly, that should be pretty close. There we are. You can see we've got a nice even width of shaving. Pop a little bit there. Oh, yeah, you can see that there. <clears throat> now that means that we should now, by uh, if you watched my previous uh, video on uh, on plane in square, you can see we can achieve a cut on one side or the other just by biasing the plane over. So I've got the plane overhanging more on the right hand side there. So um, that's got the plane set up ready to go. So. I'm going to take a shaving, plane up both pieces, um, just plane them so that they're nice and square. I'm not going to worry about the length to start with. Um, and all the time I'm watching the shaving coming out of the, the, um, the plane. See, I'm watching where the shaving is coming out and what side it's cutting thicker. Um, just so I'm aware of where the wood's coming off the board. And if I check that, it's a little bit off square at the moment. So let's take a bit more off on the right hand side. So I'm hanging the blade over, plane over on the right hand side. And I'm watching the shaving coming off. And I can see that shaving is, is thicker on the right. I was aware of where the wood's coming off. It's getting better. Yeah, that's 
good there. So I play the other board and then we'll see how, how the So I've planed up both boards and I've uh, put one on top of the other on the edges that we're jointing. And the first thing I'll do is I'll check um, whether the joint is very good in along the length. And the first check I'll do is I'll see whether I can swivel the top board. And can you see what's happening now? I can swivel it backwards and forwards, which indicates we've got a high point somewhere. And the high point will be where it's swiveling. So it's actually right there in the middle there. There's, we're pivoting on that point there. Whoops. Now, let's tighten that up a bit. Now we could put a straight edge on there and just check which board is out. Um, but in a way it doesn't really matter as long as the boards meet up together okay. See that's showing that's fairly flat. That. Um, so it probably means that this board is the one that's out. This one's not bad either. Uh, I think it's probably that one that's out there. Yeah. You can see where it's pivoting there. So I'm going to take some shavings off the central centre here. And what I do is I take a, a stock shaving off. So I've taken a shaving about that length. I've started in the middle and then I've lifted the plane away. And then I'm going to extend it out further and further. And I'm trying to observe how what the width of the shaving is that comes across. Have a look at that. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot better. Although it looks like I've got the, <laughs> got the board upside down. <clears throat> yeah, it is a lot better anyway. Because I can now rotate that and I can feel, I can, I can even hear, can you hear that? I've got a positive engagement at either end. Um, and if I, I'll get a light <laughs> later and put it behind. If I put a light behind, I shouldn't be able to see much light shining through this very slight gap that we've got here at the moment. The other check I'm going to do is, what's it like that way? Now, this board is leaning slightly back over there. Uh, I'm going to move the camera in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about. Right, so I've moved the camera around so you can see what we're talking about. And if, if I offer the ruler up, you can see there's a little bit of a gap at the top there, uh, which indicates that we've um, the, the, the piece is angled over. So we've got a high point either um, along this board here. Uh, now what I mean by high point is that Either this board is a bit high along here, which is having the effect of tilting the, the top board over, or alternatively, the top board is high along here, um, which is having the effect again of, of tilting that board over. So. On one board or the other, we've got to take off um, an uneven shaving, a shaving that's thicker on one side than the other. It doesn't really matter which board it is, um, so I'm just going to do it on the board that's um, it's in the vise. So, um, I'll just move the uh, camera again. So I've got to take a bit off this board on this side, so I'm just going to run down plain bias on the left hand side so I'm taking off a shaving which is just a little bit thicker on the left than on the right. Now, it doesn't take many shavings. I'm just going to do how many of this it's that third one isn't it? Sometimes you take too many shavings off you just go you know spoil it completely and it goes the other way. Uh, let's see what we've got. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that's looking pretty good now. 
Now if I take a few more shavings off, we'll end up with the other board leaning over too far. I just want to show you something. When I'm doing all this, I'm not actually tilting the blade, tilting the tail plane over. You know, some people would think you'd actually, actually physically tilt the blade over like that. I'm not, I'm just using the, the bias of the plane. It's the weight of the plane on the one side to create an uneven shaver. Now hopefully, this will mean that the... Uh, can you see that? There's a very slight gap just there. Um, <clears throat> which means that this top board is tilting over now. I just wanted to show you, you need to be careful when you're doing your checking that you don't just sort of plonk the ruler straight up against it and push it hard against it because all you're going to be doing is tilting this top board over. Uh, you want to be fairly careful when you do your testing. Just offer the ruler up very lightly and you can see there's, an un, um, there's a discrepancy there which I'm going to have to sort out. Now I've moved the camera right close in um, because I just want to show you something. Now we're, we're focused on the, the join in the middle of the board here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm, I've got hold of either end of the board and I'm flexing it backwards and forwards. I've got hold of the joint between the two boards. And you can see how the top board is moving about. And it's indicating really that the top board in the middle isn't actually in contact with the, uh, the bottom board. There's a very, very slight gap there, which is what I'm after really. Because um, you, what you're aiming for is to <clears throat> have that very slight gap there, which gives you, when you clamp it together, that will mean the ends are under compression. Uh, we don't want to exaggerate this gap, we're only looking for I don't know, a quarter of a millimetre or, or less. Um, but that is probably be about right what I've got there now. <clears throat> now if you try doing that and you find that you've got a perfect joint all the way across, you know, and it's quite difficult to achieve this little bit of movement. Um, then we need to actually create that little, very slight gap there. Uh, and we do that by you doing a stop shaving, similar to what we did when we were trying to get rid of that pivot point in the middle. Now, as with most things in woodwork, there's more than one way, one way of doing this. Uh, and I just want to quickly show you the, the other way. Um, and what we do is we've got the, the two boards here that we're jointing. If we fold them over, rather like sort of the leaves in the book, by folding these two faces over together, I could go the other way, I'm, I'm choosing to go this way. If we fold them over and put them in the vise, I'll get them lined up properly in a minute. Um, if we fold them over and put them in the vise like that, now if we play in these two pieces together, it doesn't matter if we don't get the angle, get them square, because even if we plane them like that, let's get a move on that. Even if we plane them so completely out of square, when we come to turn the boards whoops, over to join them up again, you'll see that those that unevenness is actually can cancel each other out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, these two in the vise and get them the top surfaces nice and level so we're taking a single shaving off both in one go. It's quite a tricky job because I've got to level it at one end. Put a peg on this end. And then that's going to straight the other end. <clears throat> now this will only work if you've got no gap showing here. If the boards are sort of slightly bowed or something so that they open out at the top here, then um, it won't work because obviously the angles will be different. Now I've got a slight problem here that there is a slight opening out here but I'm going to see if I can get away with that. I'm going to put a ramp on either end just to ensure there's no opening out at either end. I can't do much about the middle. Right, so 
very slightly. That's it. Right, I feel that's nice and even flat press there. So there will be a slight discrepancy, so the first couple of shavings might be a bit out, but let's see how we go. Now what we're aiming for is an even shaving all the way down from both boards at the same time. I do love the feel of an icy plain surface. This is, uh, these boards are beach, and beach gives almost a frictionless surface when you get a good pain on it. Anyway, I digress. Um, <clears throat> one thing about this system that we're using here, it's very good for jointing when, uh, if you have trouble planing square, but it's not so good if you have trouble planing along the length. If you don't get the flat, it's perfectly flat along the length, then this system will actually double up any uh, discrepancies. Uh, so you need to be fairly good at working in that direction, you know, getting it nice and flat in that one. Otherwise, you'll end up with gaps. Anyway, let's see how we did. <coughs> Must grease this vice sometime. Now, I'm pretty confident that we're going to be okay this way. It's not bad. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a very slight gap showing there, but that's partly because, as I said before, the board is very slightly warped. That's not too bad there either. And now we're doing this way. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good as well, actually. Yeah, I can do that little bit of movement there, which I talked about before. Right, so <coughs> that's how, we'll, how you go about getting your edges jointed nicely. So that's the edge joint all planed up and ready for biscuiting. I just want a quick word about uh, sharpening the plane uh, blade. Um, now, whenever woodworkers get together, they like to argue about sharpening, uh, and the arguments can get quite... Um, uh, heated. Um, anyway, some people argue that you should sharpen the waist like camber in the, uh, in the blade to achieve this effect that I've been talking about of planing on one side of the wood or the other. Um, now I've found that it doesn't really matter whether you put a camber in or have, the, have it sharpened straight across. It still seems to work whichever uh, way. Well, on my planes it does anyway. Um, <clears throat> now if you find you're having trouble um, achieving the effect I'm talking about with, with the blade sharpened straight across, try putting a camber on and see if that makes any difference. But generally I found that you can do it, uh, you can get that effect whether you've got a camber or not. Right, so uh, we're now going to go about biscuiting these uh, balls together and then gluing them up. Um, I think we'll have four biscuits in here all together. We'll put the first, the ones on either end, 60ml in from the end. So if I measure off 60mm, either end, we don't have to be absolutely precise about it because uh, uh, really the biscuits aren't really there for uh, structural reasons, they're really there just to help location when we're um, building up. Um, so we've got about 107 centimetres between the two outer butt biscuits. That should give us 350, 356-ish millimetres between each of the other biscuits. So just mark that off. <coughs> Square, just mark them more precisely. These boards have been uh, cut over size. Um, normally when you're jointing up like tabletops and things like that, you always have them a few, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 millimetres over size. Um, and then you just trim them to size, squaring them up uh, after you've jointed everything up. Um, if, you if you cut these balls precisely to size, then join them, you could have problems with them not lining up and things, or not being square, and you haven't got any spare um, waste to square them up. So here's my biscuit jointer, it's a uh, Makita, which I find quite good. 
can't afford a lamella. Um, most <coughs> biscuit jointers come with uh, this auxiliary fence, which you can clip on uh, to give you different depths of position for your biscuit. Um, but most biscuiting, I would say, is probably done into pieces between 15 and 25 mil wide. And if we drop down this fence here, like that, that will automatically give us a position for the biscuit, for the centre of the biscuit of 10 mil from this top surface, which would work for most um, boards between, say, 15 to 25 mil. Um, <clears throat> so that's a quick uh, sort of reference. And the other thing is it is also means that uh, your biscuit, it also means that uh, if you, it will also give a, a biscuit of a centre 10 mil from this surface as well, uh, which can be useful for other purposes, which I won't go into now. I wish I'd never mentioned it now, actually. Um, okay, so let's just change the position of the camera a little bit. I've clamped my board onto my work uh, workbench so that it's overhanging, so there's no danger of the. Um, if I had the if I had the board in the workbench like that, perhaps um, with the vice. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, with the vice underneath. When I offer that up like that, it could be that this is pushing the the um, the biscuit joint above the ball. So I want to make sure that I've got a nice clean surface to work to. This edge is unimpeded. Right, so there's some datum lines on the biscuit jointer. The really important thing with the biscuit jointer is to make sure that you make sure that this fence is nice and flat on there. Because if you don't do that, then you'll end up with steps um, between your boards because the uh, references won't be the same. So what I usually do is I give it a little bit of a shake like that before I actually make the plunge just to ensure that this corner is sitting positively into that corner. It's really important. So I'm going to switch it on then I'm going to give it that little shake just to feel it's engaged and then I'm going to plunge. Just check to see what depth we're cutting to. Yeah, so I've got that set for 10 mil um, number 10 biscuits. I'm not plugged in. Right, try it again. Okay, so I've biscuited the other ball and I've now got them dry clamped really important that you dry clamp before you actually go for a, a glue up because there's nothing worse than finding that um, you've got glue everywhere and then one of the biscuit holes isn't deep enough or something like that so I'd advise that you always have a dry clamp before you actually start putting glue on. And I've also checked that uh, it's nice and flat all along so I'm checked and corrected any imperfections there uh, before I put any glue on. And also just check that the, there's uh, no line uh, in, in the join. <coughs> okay, so I think we're ready to have it go for a glue up. But the other thing is that um, you notice I've got one clamp on top. It's important that you always alternate the clamps because if you have all the clamps underneath, then there's a tendency for the, the joint to bow up. Right, so let's go for glue up. Okay, so uh, we're ready to glue up. Now I'm going to be using these two glue dispensers. Uh, which you can get from uh, a well-known online tool store based in Axminster, Devon. Uh, this one's a, a roller which will be used for putting the glue on the surface and this one's just right for getting the glue into the biscuit holes. You don't need these but they do make life easier. Okay, let's go. <coughs> now there's a tendency for a lot of people to put too much glue on. Um, and you end up with glue squeezing out everywhere. So I'm not putting a, a lot on, it's just a film all the way along that edge there. Uh, and what I'm looking for is just a small bead of glue to be showing when I actually glue up, not lots of glue dripping out everywhere and everything. Uh, so I've got it all on the edge there. I'm just gonna 
get some into the biscuit slots <coughs> and I'll put, be putting glue in each of the biscuit slots but I'm only putting glue on one of the edges. The glue I'm using is tight bond which has become quite a popular glue in recent years. <coughs> it's called an aliphatic resin glue, whatever that means. Uh, so number 10 biscuits are going in the slots. <coughs> together. And you notice I've got these strips on the side. It's a lot easier to use clamping strips rather than clamping blocks. If you've just got the odd little block like that, they're forever dropping out. But once you've got the strip in, it's going to stay there. And you'll also notice that the strip is got a, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a pointed edge. It's sort of been um, cut off so there's a point on it. The reason for that is that it helps to put the pressure down the centre of the boards rather than towards the bottom because a lot of clamps tend to, uh, over the years, they start end up clamping at the bottom rather than all the way up. <coughs> okay, so put the top one on, stop them bowing up. Right. Well, you probably can't see that, but I've got this little thin bit of glue showing just along the top here and that's just all I need you don't need any more glue than that okay now check for how flat it is it's not too bad yep. well, another check I do is to make sure it's not what we call in wind or twisted uh, now a lot of people use things called winding sticks which they can use to check that. What I, what I do is I just put a spirit level on and check. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be level, but as long as it's out by the same amount at either end, that's looking okay. I could probably, I've got a wedge underneath the clamp here. I can just move that wedge backwards and forwards and that will change the um, level. And if I can just get those, the level correct between both ends, it shouldn't be twisted. That's it really. Um, so yeah, um, hope it's not been too boring. Uh, so we've gone right from uh, just some uh, pre-machined boards, planed them all up, biscuited them and jointed them. Great.